Greetings everybody, my name is Captain Yonisik and welcome back to another Diablo 3 video. Today we're going to talk how to build the monk in Season 31. It's going to be very easy, um, we're going to swap out the Argyles for just random legendaries. Well, they're not random random, but just to get the Argyles out of our way. You can have the Argyles, but you're going to lose the Binds on the Lesser Gods buff like that then. So instead of the Argyles, we're going to go for Lefebvre's and the Binding of the Lesser God. All right, so let's get into the build. All right, so what you're going to do is like you're going to use five pieces of the Ina. You're going to use Focus and Restraint, of course, the Squash Necklace, Frost Burns, and then a set Lefebvre's and Binding of the Lesser God. And also the Cutest Boots. All right, so... You go for the Ina's Reach, and you want to have at least an increased Mystic Ally damage by at least 105% plus. You're also going to add the Flawless Royal Emerald to it to get the 130 increased critical hit damage. And from that point on, you should be already set for your Ina's Reach. You're also going to craft the actual Primal for this one with the Primordial Ashes. And the moment you have done that, it automatically becomes a 120% increased Mystic Ally damage. So, for the pants, you're going to go for Dexterity, Vitality, and Armor, or all resist, depending on what you have at the secondary. If you have a resist on there, you go for actual Armor. Right. For the belt, you go for Dexterity, Vitality, or Resist, and 15% life. It's going to be very helpful. For the vest, you go for Dexterity, Vitality, and Increased Mystic Ally by 15%. You're going to want to have that maximum roll on it for the additional damage. For your helmet, you're going to go for Dexterity, Vitality, and the Critical Hit Chance Increased. You want to hit the 6% or at least 5. Try to get the 6% because, again, it's going to make you more powerful. All right. Then, for the Frost Burns, you want to have Critical Hit Damage, Critical Hit Chance. You actually want to try to get Attack Speed on it and Cooldown Reduction. The reason why you go for a Firstborn as the actual legendary there is because of the cold skills increased damage. 20% is the maximum, 15% is the lowest, get close to 20, like 18 or 19 if you can't find a better one. Otherwise, try to get the 20% one. All right. For your shoulders, instead of the Argyles as said, you will go for Lefebvre Soliloquy. You go for Dexterity, Vitality, Reduced Cooldown of all skills. Maximum is 8, so go for the 8% if possible. And increase the Mystic Ally damage by 15%. You want to have, again, that additional full-fledged 15% flat mystical ally damage the more damage you add the more you, you the higher you're gonna hit All right for focus and restraint your focus or your restraint depending on what you have it either needs to be critical hit chance critical hit damage and then you're gonna see if you're gonna go for attack speed flat damage or cooldown depending on what you suffer on for the restraint, again, attack speed, cooldown, or flat damage. Again, on the one thing that you suffer on. And then you go for critical hit damage and critical hit chance as well. For your Squirt's Necklace, you want to have the one with the cold damage skill on it. And then you go for critical hit damage and critical hit chance. Both try to be as close to their maximum percentage for your bindings of the lesser god you want to go for cold skills dexterity vitality and critical hit chance don't look at these one because they're very bad and your preferred 
legendary power should be at least very close to the max output which is going to be 200 percent so this one is on the very very low end i will not use this one in the actual season and you also go for a set the maximum buff for it all right and then we also have like still the curious boost to go over Dexterity, Vitality, All Resist and Movement Speed. If there is All Resist on the boots standard, replace the Movement Speed with Armor. Because of the Altar, you're going to have the additional Movement Speed anyway. You, If Armor is on there and you have the Movement Speed, you can remove the Movement Speed with the All Resist. If your secondary does not say resist of arcane cold lightning holy or whatever resistance that there's out there the reason why you go for the mystic ally is mystic ally summons two mystic allies that fight by your side standard they deal 185 percent increased damage because of the mystic ally buff you will have 10 mystic allies up anyway All right, that being said, then we go over the cube. The cube is gonna be looking quite differently this season because we're gonna have open cube slots. So that is also the reason why we swapped out all guilds and we go for Lefebvre's and Binance of the Lesser God. All right, so what I want you to do is you choose the engine that is without question because your skills are reduced by, your skills cooldowns are reduced by 10 seconds for 15 seconds after killing an elite pack. And instead of the bindings of the lesser god in the cube, like you see that it should be like 200%, you want to add the Messersmith's Reaver. Why the Messersmith's Reaver? Reduce the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by one second when you slay an enemy. That is going to be pretty huge. It's going to be like, especially when it is a cooldown on your dashing strike and your dashing strike suddenly gets up again you just fly through the entire rift and of course we're going to use the ring of royal grandeur reduces the number of items needed for the set bonuses by one which is very helpful but again because we use five slots of the ina that is where we're going to top off our six piece gain the passive abilities of the five runed mystic allies at all times Attacking enemies creates your chosen mystic ally that lasts 15 seconds up to 10 mystic allies. The damage of your mystic allies is increased by 900% for each mystic ally you have out. So it's 900% base damage. Add that by 10, you will get 9000 increased damage for your mystic allies. So you're going to be powerful. All right, how to set up the build properly, like which skills to use and which passives to use. Why hold it on the fist with the rune assimilation? Very straightforward. Cyclone strike implosion. Implosion will pull enemies close to you so you can hit them faster and harder. The mystic ally is going to be your water ally, especially because we only use the cold one for the speed GR. So that's the one you're going to go for. Your dashing strike is going to be blinding speed. You have two charges and you gain 40% increased chance to dodge. Serenity is going to be ascension. The reason why is going to buff and it protects. Epiphany does a shroud. It will increase your spirit regeneration by 20 and enable your melee attacks to instantly dash to your target for 15 seconds. For your passive skills, seize the initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75%, life increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. The Beacon of Ether reduces all cooldowns by 20%. Always grab that one because they're going to be very huge. Relentless Assault, you deal 20% more damage to enemies that are blind, frozen or stunned. Again, because of the Frost Burns, we're going to freeze our enemy so we're going to do 20% more damage to them and then you can choose either near death 
Unity or the Guardian's Path? It's entirely up to you which one you use. Unity is going to give you more power. Of course, near-death experience is going to add an additional cheat death to it. And the Guardian's Path, because you use a two-handed weapon, all spirit regeneration is increased by 15%. So it's really up to you which one you think will be the most effective. I will always choose Unity over near-death experience because you're going to run with the Enchantress or whatever follower you're going to choose. Jesus, I couldn't get to the word. So it's really up to you if you want to have that additional cheat death or not. Because you're already running with one because of the follower. So it's entirely up to you what you want. I will choose Unity because each ally affected by your mantras increases your damage by 5% up to a maximum of 20. And it has 5% increased damage. So already that will choose me will make me choose unity just because more damage. The more damage you do, the quicker you're through the GR, the quicker you can do another one. All right. And that's basically it for this one. You will have a huge amount of fun in this season. Like the altar is going to be back. The Vinger are going to be back. You're going to be blast through everything. And you're going to have a fun time. Even if you just play for opening weekend or you're going to play for like an entire week, it's entirely up to you. And I will say, go out there, have fun. And just slay any more demons. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one. Stay healthy and catch one in the next one. Bye-bye.